from the 2016 Ohio Anna Book Festival at the Sheraton downtown in Columbus, Ohio. This is Craft. My name is Doug Dangler, and I'm here today with Karen Harper, an Ohio author who is active in at least two genres and has a, a, a stack of books here to show us her literary output. Uh, you work in historical novels chronicling the lives of actual British women as well as contemporary suspense. So this is the third or fourth time I think we've talked, something like that. I think it's the third, yeah. So your June 2016 release is The Royal Nanny. Tell me about that story, which is set in uh, the British Edwardian age. Yes, it's uh, for Downton Abbey fans, I would mm -hmm. say, probably. I love to do real British women who did amazing things. Uh, this was a cockney lower class woman who ended up as nanny of the royal children of George V and Queen Mary, which is the current queen's grandparents. Okay. But anyway, uh, so it touches on the lives of Kaiser Wilhelm, who was a cousin of theirs, Tsar Nicholas, who was a cousin of theirs. These are all characters that are, are in the mm -hmm. book also. But it blew my mind that the Victorians and Edwardians let strangers rear their children. <laughs> but um, they're wealthy. Why, why is that a <laughs> yes, surprise? Yes, exactly. I mean, who, wants to, yeah, who wants to do the dirty <laughs> work with the kids? But, so this woman actually reared uh, two kings of England, the man who became uh, the Duke of, Ed, uh, Duke of Windsor eventually, mm -hmm. Bertie of the King's Speech. A lot of people love that movie, The King's right. Speech. And he stuttered. He stuttered because before this nanny, he had a very abusive nanny really? that this woman came in and, and kind of got rid of, so to speak. How does it happen? What, what was there about the nanny that got her a job if she was an abusive nanny? How do you rise to a that position? That first nanny, these, uh, some parents did terrible jobs. She must have been recommended somehow. Um, I don't know. Wow. Nannies could ruin the children or they could make them. And, and right. this woman that I'm chronicling in, in the royal nanny really made help to make. She was the emotional mother to two kings. Mm -hmm. The sixth child they had was epileptic and they had very terrible cures for epilepsy at that time, very brutal cures. They thought maybe some of them were idiots, which is so not the case. Mm -hmm. And the boy was autistic and nobody, we would say autistic, nobody knew anything about that. So this woman did a really amazing, she's the viewpoint to look at everything that was going on. Okay, so what got you interested in the story? What, uh, I mean, you know a lot about it now, but what was the initial interest? Um, I was reading something Victorian and just came across her in a footnote. Mm -hmm. And I was just amazed. I did see that the BBC has made a story about the epileptic child called The Lost Prince, and she was a very minor character in that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, somebody else had found them right. too. So, tell but, me about working in the historical genre because, I mean, it's one of those things where, unlike your suspense uh, books, where you get to make up the ending. Mm -hmm. you, you know the ending, and there's not a lot of variation. Right. Like, uh, Tsar Nicholas, not a lot of great things are going to happen. <laughs> very tragic. You know, oops. Yeah. Uh, so tell me about yeah. working in those, I mean, those seem like two really opposed genres. Well, I do always, if I'm going to do a real woman, I make sure that she herself does not have a tragic ending because okay. I don't want that. <laughs> so I have carefully, I've done five Tudor women in the past. Okay. Uh, this is a new genre for me. Uh, all good writing has suspense in it. Mm -hmm. Whatever genre, you've got to have some suspense in it to keep the readers going. Of course, the suspense novels I write are heavily suspense. Right. Um, the series that I have out now is set in Southern Ohio. I love to write about my Ohio roots. Uh, I always, unlike a lot of authors, start with a place I love or like or find intriguing. Mm -hmm. Most people start with plot or character. I guess I start with character for the historicals, but for my contemporaries, I start with a place. What's the interest in the place? How do you decide? you know, this is the place I want to set it. What speaks to you about the geography, the buildings, the people, what? It has to be a unique place and it has to be kind of an outsider type place okay. because the clash of the main civilization or culture with the subculture. I've done Amish settings, mm -hmm. as you know, we talked about that once. Appalachia is this current trilogy that's my suspense trilogy, the Cold Creek trilogy. Um, Actually, I've, I've used unusual places in South Florida. Mm -hmm. um, South Florida is entirely unusual from what I've seen. You're, you can set anything down in Florida. Yeah. Um, I, I, I was talking to an author who uh, um, his whole oeuvre, uh, I just learned a French word, yeah, is, sent a in, <laughs> is set in Florida because it's so crazy. 
uh, so many interesting many new, eccentrics yeah. loose down there yeah yep. there was a his story was a crocodile had been thrown through a Wendy's window because somebody was unhappy about service so that may be in your next book uh, that was a that was a true story right yeah. yeah that was uh, one of the things he oh, was yeah. talking it's about it's always Florida <laughs> although Ohio manages to we yeah I don't think it's <laughs> as bizarre as no. Florida. I think it's a heat. Yeah. So are, are Edwardian era books selling a lot better or are they uh, more well received in the aftermath of Downton Abbey? Are you getting a... Yes, I think so. I think that was a very well done series mm -hmm. and it's so far away from our culture right now. The pro proprieties of how you acted and just the way, you know, in the beginning of the, and then they show how they're measuring how they're setting out the, the forks so that the forks at the right. table are a precise, Wait, you know, you, you every, don't do it's that? completely different. Not you usually, do just okay. if my mother's uh, coming. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, what kind of differences do you, you have when you're looking at something like the Edwardian and then something like your contemporary suspense for you as a writer for your, that affects your process? Much more research, of course. Mm -hmm. on the, when I switched from doing Tudor era books to these Edwardian Victorian books, I did three years of reading before I switched over. Mm. And of course, my thing is I'm always writing one book and maybe researching something else, okay. you know, so. And switching, you need a, like a brain transplant to go from one right. genre, to these two particular genres that I do. What kind of research did you do? Is it uh, all, um, uh, will you go to a library or are you all online now? What's the? All of the above. Okay. And for the British books, a great excuse to go to England again. Right. Is that a, do you get a tax write-off for that? You say it's a necessary. Yes, you can. Absolutely. <laughs> don't don't joke. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, it, I went for instance uh, through Buckingham Palace. Now you can't go through if the Queen's there, but uh, went through there, Victoria and Albert Museum. You know, I went over for a conference, but then I had all this great research time. Been there many times. What happened? Uh, I haven't been to the Victoria and Albert because they won't give me an expense account. But um, what kind of things did you see there that really struck you? That spoke to you about the people that were you were writing about? Well, one thing, of course, is the costumes. Mm -hmm. If you look at what they wore, the corsets and the, and everybody, and three or four times a day you might change your clothes if you were upper class. You know, you for for a walk outside and these big weekends they had, uh, they had to have maids to help the women change their clothes. Mm -hmm. Maybe six, six changes during the day. Is that because of the corsets or because they were difficult to get on? All uh, the the, well, it, yeah, all of the above, I guess. Um, <laughs> people wore so many, it was set what you wore to dinner. It was set what you might wear for tea time, mm -hmm. you know, and all of it was, you looked rich if it took a lot of doing to get you into your outfit. Okay, all right. So is there, one, what are the aspects of one genre that say you find more engaging than another? Because you must look forward to switching genres like, oh, I'll go to the contemporary suspense and I can write about, um, you know, computers. Or I'll go to art Edwardian England, I can write about the costumes. Mm -hmm. What kind of things appeal to you out of those genres? There are many, many similarities in that as the central character that grows and changes and has problems and rises above. You know, I always have a hopeful good ending, happy ending, hopeful ending at least. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the genres are very, very different. Um, mm -hmm. It's still s universal stories about people. I was an English major. I tend to really gravitate to the historicals a little bit more perhaps. Um, granted that the contemporaries are easier to write because of the dialogue. Okay. It's our What's dialogue, you know, I don't have to look for what words were in style at that time or something. Where do you go to find out what words were in style? Is it mostly the dialogue in contemporary fiction from that time or is there a volume that tells you? Uh, well, both. I mean, there are things you can find that is Victorian slang or something like that, you know, but what? having read Dickens or having read whatever, yeah, it sort right. of sticks okay. with you. What's your favorite Victorian slang? Have you adopted any of it in day-to-day mm. -day conversation? Pip, pip, cheerio. <laughs> no. I noticed that uh, the characters in uh, Downton Abbey, and that's a good place to just get the, they did a wonderful job right. with that. Just not a bit of it. Okay. Just, right. just don't worry about it, Doug. Not a bit of it. <laughs> All right, I'll be listening to you. Uh, I'll be trying to go to your panel or something and seeing if you can slip that phrase yeah, in right. later today at Ohio yeah. Anna. I just bought a book about um, how many words of Shakespeare and how many phrases of his are still in our language. Oh, I think I saw that there was a, uh, yeah, I've yeah, seen a recent really thing about that. So you've got um, two different kinds of photos 
right, uh, for your mm. author True. images. And I, yes. was, I was struck by the difference uh, mm -hmm. in them because one, for the historical uh, fiction, you get to be uh, more chipper. It seems. Yes. You know, you get well, and I was wearing more glitzy stuff. Right. Somehow it was more glamorous. The other was very gray suit, mm -hmm. the the contemporary suspense gray suit, a little more serious. Right. Yeah. So I haven't done a study of author pictures on uh, on different genres of books. Yeah. But that must be you know they've got a really specific style in mind, and they say to you as a as an mm -hmm. author, you know, it might be a great idea for you to wear a, a gray suit and look. Um, my publisher, Mira Books, paid for that particular. I did not have to pay for that one. They they set it up, they, this and that, and they picked the final photograph. Okay. The other one I did here in Columbus, and okay. I chose. Did they get to pick? Did they pick the the outfit for you? Did no, they, they did, did not. They, say they said okay. something that I forget what they said, but yeah, something that was something serious that, looking. Something suspenseful. Yes, that's Would exactly you, yes, it. Yes, okay. Yeah, I was going to say too. I did want to make the point that. One book for a published author today can lead to all different kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Out of uh, Shattered Secrets is the first book in this trilogy that Broken Bonds is in. Right. Um, it came out first in paperback. It comes out, by the way, in Braille. I have never seen one of my Braille books. Years ago, really? I signed a thing that said, yes, all my books can be put into Braille. I will not take any money for them mm -hmm. and stuff. So they're all out in Braille, which I've never seen. Uh, Shattered Secrets came out in large print for people who need that. Mm -hmm. It also came out in book clubs, and sometimes, as you can see, they change the cover, usually not. Um, foreign copies, uh, this one's Swedish. Um, I'm big in Lithuania. Is that exciting or not? <laughs> and the, the historicals, I am a bestseller in Russia. Now, why the Russians are reading British set historicals, I don't know. Hmm. And then um, the audiobooks okay. are always. Uh, Always, that's a different cover. Always fun too. So it's really fun to see how one title can maybe get you ten books mm -hmm. or something by the time you read the French or whatever. Yeah, and uh, I assume there's also the ebook, right? Yes, so always ebooks. Always the ebook. Yeah. Um, how is the the ebook market uh, as part of the overall package that you're selling? Is that a, is now really amazingly good? Um, a little bit more so, I would say, for the contemporaries. Okay. Than for the historicals, but yeah, <laughs> I, um, I love the idea that like the historical people are like I'm not getting an e-reader. Yeah, you know I must have this in print. I want paper. Okay, so um, I don't know. You, you, you had mentioned your book Broken Bonds. It's a suspense a suspense novel and an mm -hmm. Ohioana book festival featured book, third in a trilogy. Right. So can you set it up a little bit for your the viewers and and gives uh, maybe a little bit of arc of the story. This particular trilogy is set in southern Appalachia. I made up the town so I don't get letters from people saying, there's no gas station on that corner or whatever, you know? But anyway, I made up the town, but very much based on um, some small towns down there. And they do go to the big city occasionally, like Chillicothe or Athens or something. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it's three sisters. You can read the books out of order, but it's much better to read them in order. Uh, each of them uh, grew up in this small town. Each of them has moved away for various reasons, and each of them ends up coming back. And uh, the first girl was abducted when she was young, and she remembers nothing of her abduction. She's one who came back alive, whereas a couple of later abductions of girls, they never came back. Mm -hmm. So the police would like her very much to see if she can remember things to help them, and she really can't, but she does eventually get some things triggered. The second girl uh, went to Ohio State, got a very excellent education, and is researching um, the Indian mounds that are famous in mm -hmm. that area. Okay. Um, and then the third girl is a social worker who has worked out with the Navajos and comes back and starts working with Appalachian children. But each of them has a murder mystery with, with the, well, the first one's kidnapping and murder, murder mysteries. Right, okay. So if you read them in order, the three girls are very different and they help each other. They also, each of them has a romance in it, although I would say it's a minor thing in the book compared to the suspense. Okay, so when you're writing a suspense novel, how much of it do you have plot it out? Are you somebody that says, this is where I want to be, and you write to that, mm, or yeah. uh, does it organically grow as you're writing? I used to be a real plotter. I would just have everything laid out or I was very insecure. Now my editors know that I, give, I have to give them an outline, so to speak, before I write, and they sometimes catch things that they would rather not have. Like somebody just did this 
kind of thing or something, okay. you know. Um, but anyway, now I very much let it, I know the setup, I know the location, I know there's a murder, uh, and then it very much, I don't even know who does it sometimes until I've worked through the characters. Well, that's uh, great to know your process. And uh, what's next? Uh, how many other books do you have already plotted out or have researched? I have another suspense trilogy almost set to go. I've written two and three-fourths of the books. Okay. And um, none of them are coming out until the first one comes out, and then they come out every other month with really boost sales. A lot okay. of people don't want to read the third book unless they you know, right. have everything. Um, so anyway, that, and that's set in South Florida where we lived many winters, um, so that'll be fun. And then in June I have, uh, of course, this Royal Nanny, and I hope to write another Edwardian historical also. Okay. Well, Karen Harper, thank you very much for talking thank to me again today. For more information from my guests, visit www.crafttheshow.com. This is Doug Dangler. Until next time, be creative. <laughs>